Right so I'm sitting there watching the NFL Hall of Fame. Getting ready for that, you know, just chilling, watching the scene. How the speeches go. Uh, so far, so good. The speeches are pretty good. Harold Carmichael was the first one. So, um, watching on ESPN. Thought I record, posted on YouTube. So it's gonna be a lot of players in Dutch today. It's a two day event. So, uh, which is good. How they doing it? So the second part comes on tomorrow. So this uh, the event that's on the day is the 2020 class at the Hall of Fame. Uh, Cause they didn't have a ceremony last year. So they're doing a 2020 class today for the Hall of Fame. So, which is good. And then tomorrow they'll have a class of 2021. So I'll be able to have all the speeches or making comment or commentary on it. Uh, uh, but Harold Carmichael was the first one. So, which is one of the greatest, great receivers that played for the Eagles back in the 70s. So, I'm glad to finally see him go in. So, good job in the field for getting it right. What up, what up, what up, what up? How you doing, people? I'm watching the Hall of Fame induction ceremony. That's Dick Vermeer, this is Harold Carmichael. Also, I got in the uh, uh, Hall of Fame. So, it's good. And Mike Quick. A special thanks to Jeffrey Lurie and the Philadelphia Eagles organization for all your support. After playing there for 13 years, leaving about 12 years, and you gave me an opportunity to come back for Good 17 job, more years on. to be around the Philadelphia Eagles football team. To my beautiful wife, B. For over 42 years, we've been together. She loves her family. She's given me all the support over the years. So one of the things she's doing every time we come back from a game, she would critique my play. You did this, you did that. I go, okay, I'm going to hit that enough and put for Bill uh, next tomorrow. So, but, and my granddaughters, Isabella and Zoe. Zoe, love you. Love you guys. And to this, Joe and John Savagio and all the Kenny family. My son, Lee, his beautiful wife, Jennifer, thank you very much. You don't know how much this means to me today. Thanks to Hall of Fame committee for, sele for selecting me. I also like to thank Sal Palantonio for beating the drum for me, here, for me to be here today. Thank you, Sal. Glad and to see last that. but not least, the Eagles Nation. Thank you. Thank you for welcoming a 22-year-old kid from Jacksonville, Florida, and really accepting me as being one of your own. Thank you for the support. Thank you for your relentless passion, your energy, your pride. To me, you're the best fans in the world. To, to the ones that are here in Canton, the ones back in Philadelphia, and the ones around the world, Thank you for sharing this moment with me. We all share this together. Go Birds. Go Hamilton Ely soccer team. I love you. Stay safe. God bless you. Thank you. Another member of the special centennial class, 
And Lewis, it's about time for Cowboy Safety Cliff Crash Harris, part of the 1970s All-Decade Team. Yeah, Susie, look, athletes are taught all the time. It's not about where you start, but where you finish. This guy was That's undrafted in 1970. Him and Charlie Waters were two of the best safeties in the entire NFL through the decades of the 70s. He wound up being a two-time Super Bowl champion, 29 career interceptions, not a bad career. One of the toughest to ever play the game. Back to Chris Ford. Crash Harris. Finally, that's a lot of things. Back in 1970. Back then. All right, I'll say it. Way back, back, back then. There were 17 rounds in the NFL draft. Nobody selected the safety from tiny... Washita Baptist University in Arkansas, who then went on to play wow. semi-pro football for the Southern thing. California Rhinos. You remember them, right? <laughs> to say that the odds were long on free agent Cliff Harris making the Dallas Cowboys, well, that would be an understatement. That he would start at free safety for a team that made the playoffs every year but one in his 10-year career program. playing. Remember, there weren't as many postseason games now. 21 postseason games, including seven NFC title games, five Super Bowls, winning two of them with those odds, we'll call them astronomical. Not for Captain Crash. He was a math major. See? And Coach Tom Landry could see that, well, he understood these intricate defenses he was trying to put in with the Cowboys. He also understood, Cliff did, how to bring it. George Allen called him, quote, a rolling ball of butcher knives. <laughs> Larry Wilson, who we lost this year, Hall of Fame safety, said, quote, he's changed the way the position is played. Nobody had a better view than the man that lined up alongside of him at safety for the Cowboys for almost literally every step and snap of the way. His presenter is Charlie Waters. It's an oxymoron to say that Cliff is just a football player. He's a lot more than that. He shows it all on the field. He had a great passion for it, and it was contagious. Everybody on the team understood what Cliff stood for and how he played. In 1970, Cliff Harris juggled life as a rookie safety for the Dallas Cowboys and active military service. On and off the field, Harris was no ordinary football player. It was a Gilbert genius that brought Cliff Harris to the Cowboys. He was from a small college, Washita Baptist College in Arkadelphia, Arkansas. And this guy's got a chance to make it in the NFL, and he makes it, and he makes it with an exclamation point. And he ended up being one of the best free safeties in the history of the game. With 29 career interceptions and six straight Pro Bowls, Harris left his imprint on the game and changed the way it was played. Cliff Harris was not like a free safety that had been playing in the NFL before that. Cliff was not that way. Away from me for a while. Be back Cliff to you. Harris had uh, a, a the NFL Hall of Fame is a great thing. So I love watching it. Play, so uh, we'll see how it works out. Take you later.